that's one cool dude. And yes, that is Pocahontas behind me, which might give you a clue to the fact that I'm in Gravesend. Where is Gravesend? It's here on the map that I'm showing you right now. And I'm going to do an eight mile higher marshes walk. And I'm not going to do that alone. Is Pocahontas coming with me? No, she's made a bront. Instead, I've got none other than Tom Crowley. Hello. Have I pronounced your surname right? No, Crowley, but that's OK. What a fantastic start to the walk. Uh, Tom is from Gravesend, and he's going to um, give me some facts that I failed to research on the way. All right, we've got um, four hours till the train gets here, Tom, so, as usual, it's going to be a panic. Right, OK, sounds good. Um, good luck, everyone, especially... Us. Oh, nice shopping trolley there. <laughs> Perfect. Always a good sign. Oh, yeah. I had lunch at that Three Doors pub, and it was fantastic. And there, my friends, is Gravesend Pier, which, according to the fact sheet, was the main port of embarkation for the passenger steamer to and from London. Did you know that, Tom? I did know that, I did. I also know that that there is the still in operation Joseph Marley ferry boat that goes across to Tilbury, across the river. Oh, it looks like someone's going to have a few more facts than me on this uh, adventure. Oh, just uh, not trying to outdo you or anything, Merrick. I'm just, you know, it's, this is my neck of the woods and everything. Oh, all right, all right. This is a big red boat. This is the oldest building in Gravesend, right? Uh, I believe it was the chapel that was built in 1870. And uh, that was funded by a bunch of people who lived around these parts, including Charles Dickens and the daughter of the man that invented the Beaufort scale, which sailors used to measure wind speeds. I did a Ramsgate walk this morning, yeah. and a guy who may or may not have been insane stopped me right. and told me that Dickens lived in, in Ramsgate for a bit. And it's the, if you go to London, you know, you've probably seen my videos, yes. he's been to every single pub. There must have been. Yeah five or six Dickens, or people pretending to be Charles Dickens, getting free drinks in pubs. Do you think so, it's like that bloke that lived for ages pretending to be Stanley Kubrick, and there was just a load of Charles Dickenses running around? Yeah. In Kent and London. It's just that he was the very first lookalike, Charles yeah, Dickens. Right. We were just talking and about Charles Dickens having a reputation for... Um, Adultery. Yes, and, and uh, seeing prostitutes. Mm. And if it, could have, right it could have been bad lookalike, Charles if Dickens. Charles Dickens is evil doppelganger. Yeah. Maybe. Someone contacted me to ask if I was um, in on the Isle of Wight in a Liverpool shirt recently. Mm. And I get uh, basically mistaken for most middle-aged tubby bull men. About once a week someone would say, were you in Sainsbury's in crew? No. There was another bald, a different bald man, man wearing nondescript clothing. And throwing feces at staff. <laughs> throwing feces at staff. Anyone doing that, they're like, that's and, probably Merrick Larwood. And not wearing any pants and trousers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's always a good sign. With heavily tattooed buttocks. That's it. The Millwall uh, tattoo on the arse there, cheek. There are quite a few of us. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. I just get Hugh Dennis and Sir Isaac Newton. On a, a bit more cerebral. Yeah, a little bit. No, there's not much detail about this, but uh, there are tunnels underneath all these parts here where this fort that we're next to is extended underneath the earth secret tunnels and things, and uh, people say they've seen a hovering dark shadow and they've felt cold spots and heard strange noises. Oh, yeah, the classics. And, and that's it. You just needed a grey lady the, there to give it the whole... The whole uh, cliché ghost The grey lady or a monk. It's always I think a monk. There's, there's a pub further out west in the sort of the bit of Gravesham called Northfleet, which is like sort of annexed down just mm -hmm. slightly over in, uh, to the west of here, and there's a pub there and they've got Grey Lady, so you have all of it here in, in Kent. Oh, this is going to be in the new tourist advert, I think. This is possibly one of the most incredible starts to uh, a walk ever. What do you mean? It's absolutely uh, picturesque. We've got the hanging thorn branches. Yes, or... this is the hanging gardens of Babylon, right? Yeah, yeah, more or less, yeah. What I like is the sound of an engine that you don't know what the engine is doing. 
in the distance, just to sort of add atmosphere to the... Uh, it's just chopping up bodies, Tom. I think this it's is... It's a blender um, for the uh, dead bodies. I think this might be a, a saw situation. Tom's going to give us some Pocahontas facts, just yes. in case we don't survive this bit of the walk. Well, uh, the statue of Pocahontas in the St George's Church Gardens, that was built in... Yeah, 1958, and it's a replica of one built in 1907 in Jamestown, the settlement in Virginia, near where Pocahontas was from. And so they built another one here to commemorate where she died. Would you like to know how she ended up dying in Gravesend? Did she walk down this passage? Yeah, <laughs> an alleyway. So Pocahontas uh, was on a kind of uh, celebration tour of the UK, and she met um, James I's wife, who was Queen Anne, and uh, having come from the Americas as a sort of ambassador to the United Kingdom, uh, given that she was sort of ambassador to the settlers in Jamestown in Virginia, where she came from. And uh, so she came over here, met royalty. It was a bit of an exciting... Uh, this is very official. I'm just laughing at this part of yeah. this gate. Uh, very official exit. It lit it's literally been bent off its hinges. And, oh, right, try and get through here. Yeah, carry on. Hello, yes. So she was a bit of a local celebrity and uh, she was only about 22 or something. And she, uh, she took ill on the journey home very early on. And the last point that you could stop for clean water and food and supplies and stuff was Gravesend. So they pulled in, she'd taken ill, they took her off the boat and she died in Gravesend. So she, I, when I first came here, I thought she had a really long-standing relationship with the town. But as it turns out, she just pulled in to die here. And that's why she's buried in St George's Churchyard. There might be two more statues there by the end of this walk. <laughs> The detours have caused us to be a bit behind on the walk. So we are going to go down this bit here yeah. and then onto the canal here, hopefully to get back in time for the train. That's right. The issue we've had, Merrick, I think, is that this isn't a walk and people have told us that it is. Yeah, basically, the council, have the first bit was a, a lie. They've taken my rates and they've used it to fund lies. OK, well, I don't know if... Can you be sued for that? I uh, hope so. OK, good. All right. Let's carry on on the way back home. Fingers crossed we get there in time for the train. We've got two hours and 15 minutes. It'll be fine. We're on the home stretch now, cool dudes. And we just stopped off for 20 minutes or so to record a sketch for Tom's podcast, Crowley Time. Not Crowley Time. Oh, Crowley there we go. Crowley time. Quality merchandise available at crowleytime.com. Cool dudes. I'll put a link to the podcast yes, please. somewhere around here so you can listen to a sketch about a walker and things going oh, more wrong than they have in this walk. So far, things could get worse. Massive walkers. Good walk to you listeners and welcome to another episode of Massive Walkers. It's the podcast all about stepping outside, exploring England's beautiful countryside and getting some proper nasty blisters in your feet. <laughs> it's time for question of the day called cool dudes. And some of you might have noticed that recently I've been getting into um, more graphic novels, which I think are a very underrated medium. It just so happened that Tom used to work in a comic shop so I did he's going to recommend three in a minute but if you've got any good recommendations for your favorite graphic novels please write them below and now Tom what are your three favorites you recommend to people who don't really know much about graphic novels I've just thought can I say four yes but you have to say them the time it takes to say okay. three excellent well the first one I would say I definitely recommend a series called Isaac the Pirate by a French cartoonist called Christophe Blain. B-L-A-I-N, Blain. Number two. So I'm going to recommend Fred the Clown by Roger Langridge and Tales Designed to Thrizzle 
by Michael Kupperman. That's two together. And number three uh, is Jack Staff by a British cartoonist called Paul Grist. Recommendations complete. One of my favourite sights you seldom see, the shoes hanging from a telephone wire. They're Tom's shoes. But how am I supposed to get them down, mate? Nice one, cool dude. That is the walk complete. Eight miles, about three hours, 45 minutes. Maybe not the most picturesque of walks, or the second most, or even the top 100 most, but an interesting walk nonetheless. If you enjoyed that, you can also help me make more videos. How? Oh, by joining the club. How do I do that? Go to YouTube. You can click on one of these four tiers. You can pay anything from 99p to £8.99 if you're very generous. You get to watch these members only videos, use these emojis, and get entered into the prize draw at the end of the video. Oh, that's all very good. All right, cool dudes. Please um, uh, say thank you with me to Tom. Thank you very much for taking me around Gravesend. You're welcome, cool dudes. Um, what did you think of the walk? I thought it was really interesting. I saw some horses and Marek stole my shoes, and now my feet hurt. OK, that is about it. Listen I'll... to my podcast as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Marek will be in one either that's already out or will be out soon, so do look out for that. Got a plug in. There's one more thing to say. Oh, yeah. Stay, Stay cool. cool. It's thumbs, not points. Sorry, I, I've added something to it. Absolutely love it. I want to buy this picture. Well, you can on eBay. Starting price is eleven pounds sixty-five pence. Before the prize draw, what is the news? So you might be thinking, oh, how come he's got those sunglasses when he snapped them in a previous episode? Well, this was recorded before that episode. But I have got three pairs of those sunglasses. And I'm down to the last one. The podcast in which I feature in on Crowley Time is out on the 20th of October. If you're watching this before then, you have to wait. You can listen to other podcasts by Tom. Otherwise, the link is down below or up here somewhere. I never know where it is. Please tell me. Oh, no, I'm turning it to... A robot. In other news, there are more Halloween keyrings available. This is the last bunch. Please send me your Halloween keyring photos for the Ghost Walk, which will be out on Halloween. Right, that is it. No, it isn't. I've added two more tiers to the levels of YouTube subscriber. You can be basically an option to pay more money why would you do that well maybe you're rich and you want to get rid of the money to help the world and if you would like to sponsor my videos a bit like the man in massive walkers please get in touch on cordy's walking club at gmail.com because any funds to help this channel are welcome. All right, cool dudes. Thank you for everyone who's a member. The prize draw is coming up now. The prize this week is the stickers, the badges, a key ring with slightly jaundiced eyes, a cow's laser key ring, a stripey art card, a spotter's handbook, a paracord bracelet, and also a free download of the music to Tom Crowley's podcast. I'll send you that link. It's time to say, random number generator, generate me a number. Generate. The number is 91. The 91st longest serving YouTube member is Travelling Torrin, who has been a member for 22 months. Thank you. I'll be in touch and put... This excellent prize in the post to you. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for everything.
one more thing. Stay cool.